everybody, we're back with Laverne, who's been suffering from menopause symptoms for six years and desperately needs a fix. So I called in medical director of, North, of the Northwestern Medicine Center for Sexual Medicine and Menopause in Chicago, my friend, Dr. Lauren Stryker, to help. So before we get going, David, let me ask you this. How has your wife's menopause affected you all's intimacy? We're still intimate. Uh, but there are times, Steve, it's this fan that she got on that's, it got a clamp on it, on the headboard. It then took off the paint and, and... You got a fan just on you. Yes, you know, and... It don't I, always just be on you, but you have it on me <laughs> It hit me too, yeah. <laughs> now I have to tell you this, like, he liked to leave the lights on sometime. I'm like, we're not about to leave these lights on, right? Because with all of this extra, you know, mm-mm, that ain't cute and it ain't sexy. So, you know... It ain't cute, it ain't sexy to you. Right. Oh, you just, yeah. Hello. But, but you know I love it. To I you. I know you do, boo. <laughs> but look, I always... Get lights on, see what's happening. No. <laughs> so, literally, there's a lot of information out there about <laughs> menopause and treating the symptoms which confuses women. So today we're gonna set the record straight on menopause. So let's get right to it. It's said that uh, age 44 is a normal time for women to go through menopause. So Dr. Stryker, is this a myth or a fact? Well, this is actually a fact because 51 is the average age, the average age for women to go through menopause, but any time after 40 is normal. And that's why women get so blindsided by it. Because they're like, wait a minute, I can't be I'm like a teenager. How right. can this be happening? And okay. it's absolutely normal. That's first. Next one. Smoking will cause an early menopause. Is this myth or fact? It is a fact. There yeah. are a lot of factors that will determine the age of menopause. Genetics is one. But smoking can plow you right into an early menopause even a couple of years in advance. So just yet another reason. All right. Let me ask smoke. you this one. Hot flashes last an average of two to three years. Myth or fact? All right, Laverne, you want to answer this one? Oh, my hot flashes is ongoing. This is a myth. And this is a myth that is not only believed by a lot of women, but also by a lot of doctors. We now know the average length of time that a woman suffers from hot flashes, and 80% of menopausal women do, is seven to 10 years. Wow. Seven to 10 years? Oh, it gets worse. Because African-American women, they're more severe, up to 12 to 14 years. That's amazing. I'm learning something here. I'm next. Next. Doing yoga a minimum of three times a week will reduce hot flashes. Oh, yeah. Menopausal women that are burning up love going to hot yoga. Not. <laughs> you know, yoga is really good. It has a lot of health benefits, but it has been scientifically shown not to help hot flashes. So don't beat yourself up if you're not making it to the yoga studio. Next one. Low estrogen levels cause weight gain. That's actually a myth. Follow me on this one. Low estrogen doesn't directly cause you to gain weight. There are a lot of reasons that 90% of women, as they go through menopause, gain weight. But low estrogen is not a direct factor. What low estrogen will do is it causes a redistribution of their fat. So even for women who don't gain one single pound, suddenly they've got the muffin top going. So it's not a direct cause of weight gain, it's an indirect cause. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, low dose birth control pills have less estrogen and are safer to take than taking hormone therapy to alleviate hot flashes. Is that a myth or is that a fact? This is a myth. And it's really interesting because every day women will come to me who are taking their low-dose birth control pill and they're totally happy. And I'll say, you know, now it's time to switch over to hormone therapy because you're in menopause. And they're like, oh, no. Oh, no. You know, my birth control pill, that was fine. But I have this idea that hormone therapy is dangerous. And in fact, it's the exact opposite. The hormone levels in birth control pills are much higher. The hormones are much more potent. And in fact, the risk of having a problem from birth control pills is higher than the risk of taking hormone therapy after menopause. One of the biggest misconceptions out there. Wow. Okay. So now we've covered and taken care of some of the misconceptions with menopause. Dr. Stryker, what can Laverne do 
to get a handle on these symptoms that she's experienced. All right. Well, Laverne, before she came on the show, she filled out a very, very comprehensive medical history, which I reviewed. And while there's a lot going on, one of the things that's really obvious is these all day, all night hot flashes are really the culprit in so many of the symptoms that you're having, especially the all night hot flashes, because let's just face it. If you are not sleeping, if your sleep is disrupted, you're not going to be able to think. You're not going to be able to function. Sex? Are you kidding? So that is really the biggest issue. In addition, while I said estrogen in itself doesn't cause you to gain weight, lack of sleep does. Now, the science is really solid on this. We know that if women get less than seven hours of straight sleep a night, that your hunger hormones are going to surge. So you're going to eat more and your metabolism actually slows down. And a recent study came out that showed just one night, one night of disrupted sleep makes your metabolism slow down. But fortunately, we've come a long way in terms of hormone therapy, which we know does work to alleviate these hot flashes. We have creams, we have gels, we have sprays, we have pills that are really going to, if not eliminate, dramatically reduce the hot flashes. You're going to live a 30 year life after menopause. You've got a great husband. So the bird, how does that sound for you? That sounds awesome. Anything, because I feel really bad that my family has to go through that. I really need the help. Help is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where do you guys live? Grand Blank. Well, we say Flint. And everybody knows Flint. Oh, Michigan. Michigan. You up yep. there. Okay, so you close to Chicago. Yeah, mm -hmm. about four and a half. Four and a half hours. Yeah, that's four and a half. You drive yeah. over there and stop these flashes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, we're driving. We're driving. We're driving with the window down. With the windows with, down, right. With the window down. Yeah, with the windows down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Laverne and David, thank you. Good luck. I'm glad you were very open. You know, it, it helps when you open up like this because a lot of women, you know, don't like talking about it, but it's a real problem out there. So when a person like you opens up about it, you help a lot of people. You know, really, you help a lot of people. So, so thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. And we'll get you over to her and see if we can get you some help. Right. A special thanks to my buddy, Dr. Stryker. We'll be right back, everybody.